A startup wonders why they've received a cease and desist letter from Hugo Boss. Surely they can't stop us using the word boss, they say. Well, yes, they can. It may be an ordinary word, but Hugo Boss used it first. There are plenty of examples of brand names based around common words such as Shell, Virgin, Jaguar, Mars and many more. As long as a common word isn't a generic term, it can be owned. For example, the word burger is generic for a hamburger business like Burger King. That business only has rights in the word king. Nobody can claim monopoly rights over what are simply descriptive terms because the law protects the rights of traders to use such terms in their sector. So, if you call your pizza business fresh pizzas, neither of these words are distinctive for the pizza category. Both are generic words. Competitors may want to describe their pizzas as fresh and the law protects their right to do so. So you would have no rights in your name. By contrast, if you called your umbrella business fresh umbrellas, you would own rights over the word fresh in the umbrella category. The word is distinctive in the context of umbrellas because umbrella sellers don't need to describe their umbrellas as fresh. The second essential point to understand about trademarks is that the trademark system only allows a business to own common words for specific business activities. So a common word is simply owned for the specific area of activity covered by a business's trademark. There are 45 classes of goods and services, each with thousands of descriptions. So provided two businesses operate in different industries, they're unlikely to be confused with one another, so they may share a name. That's why Delta is a brand name for airlines, kitchenware and appliances. Dove is a brand of personal care products, but it's also a brand of chocolate. And Polo is the brand name for confectionery and for cars and clothing. All these brands belong to different businesses. They can coexist because they're registered in different non-overlapping areas of activity. Indeed, two brands may coexist in the same class too. For example, AA is registered in class 39 for transportation services by American Airlines and also by the Automobile Association. As they're in entirely different industries, they're not confused with one another and can coexist. As Hugo Boss owns the word boss in the fashion industry, anyone using the word boss in their fashion business name would infringe on Hugo Boss's trademark rights. And that leads to the third essential point to understand about trademarks. Household name brands have a greater scope of protection. That means if you use Google as your name for the supply of building materials, you would infringe on Google's trademarks, even though Google isn't in the building materials business. Google is a famous brand in all countries, which is why I use it as an example. Generally, you'd need to consider whether a brand like Hugo Boss is a famous mark in a given country in which a dispute arises. Every country will have its own rules for determining whether a mark should be considered well known in its jurisdiction or not and hence have a greater scope of protection. Understanding these three points about trademarks means you'll be less likely to make fundamental errors around names. You'll make much better decisions when choosing new names.